Welcome to One Mind Zen Hermitage. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unsan Chitta. Greetings, great bodhisattvas. I'm glad you could join us. Tonight, uh, I'd like to start out by reading a little something. <clears throat> this is from uh, Saint San, third part patriarch of Zen's uh, epic poem, uh, the Xin Chin Ming, which uh, Wu Song, whose book I will be reading this out of, uh, refers to as trust in mind. We've also seen other versions that uh, call it uh, faith, mind, inscription, uh, any number of other things. But this particular translation was done by Richard Clark, and it's uh, the one that resonates most with me. So I'm glad to see that he, Wu Song, uh, put it right up front. The great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. When love and hate are both absent, everything becomes clear and undisguised. Make the smallest distinction, however, and heaven and earth are set infinitely apart. If you wish to see the truth, then hold no opinions for or against anything. To set up what you like against what you dislike is the disease of the mind. And a little further on, he reinforces, do not search for the truth, only cease to cherish opinions. So, Seng San, as I said, third patriarch of Zen, probably was well-versed in the great way. And right at the top, first sentence, the great way is easy. It's easy. But the second sentence is, or the second part of the sentence is, for those who have no preferences. He doesn't say being one of those with no preferences is easy. And in the current climate, politically, environmentally, societally, uh, around the world, not even just limited to the United States, there uh, are some divisions that are uh, apparent, you might say, obvious. And even as students of the, the Buddha of the Great Way, it's pretty easy also to get caught up in opinions to have some less than bodhisattva-like thoughts about some people. Not particularly wanting to save all sentient beings. Just everybody except this guy. Some of us even find ourselves taking delight in the difficulties of others, that Schadenfreude thing, enjoying the travesties that befall others. But that's not the great way. When we do 
hang on to these opinions and we do cling to them with claws in. We're not on the great way. We're not following the Buddha path. And you might throw in a, yeah, but, and, okay, what would the yeah, but be? I'm an engaged Buddhist, so therefore I must be this and that and pro this and pro that and uh, environmentally savvy and liberal and all these other things, all these other isms that we cling to. Sang San says, drop them. For everyone who we perceive as evil, there are others who perceive the same person as benevolent. This is possibly not entirely 100% correct, but I believe that people typically aren't pure 100% evil. They, in some way or another, do things that they think are in the best interest of others. And you can certainly see that there are those politically who one might disagree with and think it's absurd that anyone could disagree with us. There are those that think that person A is actually looking out for the interests of at least some people and probably thinking, well, the rest of you will come around when you see how right I am. Very rarely, if ever, has there been someone that's been universally reviled, hated, 100% all the time, always wrong, always acting in only their own self-interest. There are some, admittedly, who, you know, might come close to that sort of definition. But deep down, there is at least the possibility that they have someone's best interests at heart. Even if they go about it the wrong way to try and convince anyone else, or their motivations aren't quite pure, or they're doing it not so much as for the benefit of some as for the screw them of others. It's tough to think of someone who is 100% always unchangeably evil. We perceive evil, we perceive good. The Heart Sutra tells us that all perceptions are empty. And shunyata, usually translated as emptiness, I found another way of describing it that I'm fond of these days. I'm going to see 
I'm going to wear it and see how it's how comfortable it is. But uh, some use the word openness as an equivalent to shunyata. I'm going with transparent. These perceptions that someone is good, someone is evil, that this action is correct, this action is incorrect. We can see through them. They're transparent. They're subject to causes and conditions and they will change. Sometimes people might have some sort of difficulty befall them, which may cause them to come around and say, what was I thinking? I was so wrong. Then again, maybe the, in that case, they won't also. But regardless, it's another issue of transparency, of emptiness, of openness, of shinata. It's characterized by causes and conditions. Anything that is subject to causes and conditions, which is pretty much everything, is empty. So how do we want to cease having these really deeply held opinions and these deeply felt perceptions of people that we really think are just plain wrong? We may even tell ourselves that it's not that we don't like them, it's just that they're wrong. Even that is transparent, it's empty. You may come around and say, ah, no, he wasn't such a bad guy after all. Then again, you may not for quite some time, or someone you like may have those, uh, what's, uh, feet of clay, the statue with the feet of clay that you know, looks all great as a statue and then whoops, the ankles start to go and bang down to the same level as the rest of us. So how do we rid ourselves from these things? these preferences that are a hindrance to our following the great way. We're not here to make a, you know, sort of less unpleasant samsara. We're here for liberation. And getting rid of those preferences, those opinions, those isms, those stances, are hindrances from us on the way. One of the things that we do is we meditate, we take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And to the best of our abilities, if nothing else, we do no harm. We sit on the cushion, we meditate, we ask ourselves, am I doing any harm? We hold on to it throughout the day. Am I doing any harm? Am I doing any harm? Am I doing any harm? We put it into an almost wazoo-like scenario where 
we're not just saying, who is this that's not doing any harm? Make it more personal, more heart. Am I doing any harm? Is any action I'm taking doing any harm? If the answer is a genuine no, then for that moment, excellent. We can maintain that from moment to moment to moment. Excellent. And we can truly say that we are on the great way rather than getting on the off-ramp of politics or health concerns, or environmental concerns, or racial concerns, all of these off-ramps, no matter how well-intentioned our thoughts about them are, are still, when you get down to it, hindrances on the great way. The great way is easy. The great way is easy. For those with no preferences. Being that person with no preferences, well, maybe not so much.